Good afternoon, Chairman Cruz, Ranking Member of Cinema, and members of the subcommittee with a special shout out to Senator Capito from my home state of West Virginia, who's probably thinking to herself, oh my gosh, what's Homer going to say now? <laughs> what Homer is going to say now is that I believe most firmly that our destiny lies at the moon. We need to go back to the moon. We need to put an anchor there. And from that anchor, develop the moon commercially and scientifically. One of the, one of the stories left out of uh, the movie October Sky that was based on uh, Rocket Boys was the fact that I met Senator John F. Kennedy when he was running for president in the West Virginia primary that he had to win. And since I was a rocket boy headed toward the National Science Fair, he asked me what we should do in space. And I answered Senator Kennedy. I looked around at all the coal miners in the, uh, in the crowd, and I said, well, I think we should go to the moon and just mine the blame thing. <laughs> and all the coal miners, they just they laughed and cheered, and he said, elect me president, and maybe we will. Most recently... One of my books called Back to the Moon, Vice President Pence told me that uh, that's one of his favorite books. And we talked at length and extensively about that. The next thing I knew, he was down in Huntsville, Alabama at the Space and Rocket Center at Space Camp saying, we're going back to the moon by 2024. So I'm kind of in a unique position of being able to take credit for both the Apollo <laughs> <laughs> and the Artemis space program. I do, I really do advocate going back to the moon. There is a lot of work to do there. There is decades of work yet to be done. Where was I when Apollo 11 landed? I was in the hospital ward at uh, Fort Lewis, Washington with uh, some fellow veterans of the 4th Infantry Division and we watched the Apollo land. And at that point, even though my mind had been occupied a great deal by Vietnam and, and, and all of that struggle, I. I realized that I really wanted to work for NASA. I, I was going to make that happen. It took me a while. In 1981, when the shuttle started to fly, uh, I got to work for NASA, and I loved it. I, w I woke up every morning and said to myself, oh, my goodness, this is great. I get to go work for NASA today. It's a tremendous agency, and I absolutely loved it. Well, here we are, and what are we going to do? Well, Mark Twain once said, God look looks after fools, drunks, and the United States of America. And that comment was never more apt than the way our space program has evolved. Modern American industry is now moving forward in space in astonishing ways. And just SpaceX and Blue Origin are just a couple of those bright new companies that are coming up. They're able to come up with new designs and be more timely and much less, uh, create much less expensive ways to get in space. They're even beating out the heavily subsidized space programs um, uh, around the world, like China. So we have every right to be proud of that. And why are they able to do that? Because of a number of parallel forces that include modern computer systems, the rise of the Internet, new, man new manufacturing techniques, and, al and along other parallel lines, we see a demand for clean and abundant energy and awareness that Earth is in danger of being permanently polluted and the gradual development of a new philosophy that seeks to put mankind in context with the universe. As all engineers know, Parallel lines never intersect until they do. These parallel lines of force I just mentioned intersect primarily at one place, our moon. Luna, the small planet that circles us, our eighth continent torn from the Earth millennia ago. And so it is at this moment, given to us by the benevolent hand of creation, that all the elements needed to go back to the moon and set up shop have come to us so as to utilize its mineral wealth, and discover all that is there. And this includes, by the way, the possibility of evidence of life. We've never looked at a single water molecule from space. We're going to find a lot of water ice on the moon, and in there might be evidence of life, because the Earth and Luna have been sharing DNA for millions of years because of uh, meteors and asteroids. Sort of God's little space program. Didn't work out for the dinosaurs, but it may work, work out for us. In summary, I applaud the essentials of the Artemis program to take us to the moon, but I do say so with this proviso, that what we do on Luna must make sense to the American people, both economically and philosophically, and should be designed in such a way that it may cost the people's money to place an anchor there, but not so forever, 
in order to sustain our presence. The riches on the moon, rare earth metals, thorium, titanium, helium-3, and other minerals should be gathered to boost our economy and thus put money in the pockets of all Americans. Our citizens should be assured that a base on the moon will make this country stronger and safer. And I have to say, I don't really much care who the next professional astronaut on the moon is. What I care about, who the next American plumber, electrician, construction worker, and blue-collar worker on the moon. Because when that happens, we know that we are finally a space-faring nation. Thank you.